Coffee cupping is the method that coffee industry professionals use to evaluate coffee for its quality. We evaluate coffee for its cleanliness, sweetness, acidity, mouthfeel, flavor, aftertaste, balance, and our overall impressions of the beverage. It's a fun and easy process and anyone can do it from the comfort of their home. My name is Alex Pond and I'm an educator for the Cup of Excellence. The Cup of Excellence is a not-for-profit that seeks to discover the best coffees produced from different countries around the world. We connect the farmers who grew those coffees with buyers who are willing to pay a premium price for them. We're here at our lab in Portland, Oregon, and I'm gonna show you what you need to cup from home, how to cup, and what you can learn from it. There's standard equipment that you need to set up a cupping. Luckily, there's items that we can use that we probably have around our house or are easily purchased on a budget. I would recommend starting with three to four different kinds of coffee. Look for coffees that are single origin coffees. Coffee is gonna be best within the first two weeks after roast. You wanna find a water that's clean, fresh, and odor free. If possible, you should source a local bottled spring water. If you don't want to invest in bottled water for your cupping, you can use a simple home water filter to filter your tap water. You want to make sure that you are grinding your coffee with a burr grinder, electric burr grinders, or hand-operated burr grinders. Both of these are going to give you super consistent grinds and make your cuppings taste great. You can use either an electric kettle or a stovetop kettle. It doesn't really matter, as long as the kettle has a wide mouth so that it pours water quickly. Ideally, you want a scale that has a sensitivity of 0.5 grams. In an even more perfect world, you're looking for a scale that has a sensitivity of 0.1 gram or 0.01 grams. You're gonna need a timer to monitor the brew time. A kitchen timer is ideal, but you can also use your phone. There's tons of options for cupping bowls that you can use at home. In an ideal world, you should use something that's between five and eight ounces made out of either glass porcelain, or ceramic. You'll want to make sure that you have a cup to clean your spoons off with. It's called your rinse cup. You want to use a wide mouth soup spoon. You can also order an official COE cupping spoon. It's best practice to use a spit cup so you don't get over caffeinated. Really, any cup will work as long as it's not your roommate's coffee cup. When you're done cupping, you don't want to end up dumping cupping grounds down your sink because then you're going to have to call a plumber. To avoid that, you can get a fine mesh sieve that will catch the coffee grounds and prevent them from going down your drain. The first thing that we need to do, now that you've selected your cups, is to figure out how much ground coffee needs to be put into each cup. First step is you're going to take your cup and place it on the scale. Your scale should read all zeros. If it doesn't, you want to zero out your scale. You're going to take your kettle and fill your cup with water. You want to fill it to just below the brim. We're going to use a simple mathematical equation developed by the SCA. This cup holds 7.5 ounces of liquid. Multiply by 1.63. This equals the grams of coffee that you need to add to your cups. Now that you know how much coffee you need in each cup, it's time to weigh it out. Set your cup on the scale, tear out your scale, make sure that your scale is set to grams, and start adding coffee. Repeat until you have beans in all of your cups. Once you have all of your coffee weighed out into your cups, it's time to start grinding. Make sure that there's no coffee in the bottom of your grinder or in the top of it. Remove the lid. Empty the coffee in, and start your grinder. When your grinder's done and all the coffee beans have been ground, take your ground coffee and place it back in the cup. Repeat this until all your coffees have been ground. To figure out what the correct grind setting is for you, Take your grinder and set it to the factory recommended filter grind setting. You can do an easy three cup test to decide if you need to grind coarser or finer from that point. Once you have all your coffees ground, it's time to evaluate the fragrance of the dry grounds. This is a really easy process. You wanna hover over the coffees 
and gently inhale. Even if you're cupping the same coffee in every cup, it's important to evaluate the fragrance of each cup. This is also a really good opportunity to take notes on what you smell. Once your coffee is ground and in your cups, it's time to get ready to brew. The first step is to fill a kettle and boil your water. You want to heat your water to between 198 and 205 degrees. You can check the temperature using a digital instant read kitchen thermometer. If you don't have one of these, you can simply bring your water to a rolling boil and then let it sit for a minute. It's important to remember that if you're cupping in a high altitude city, water boils at a much lower temperature. So you'll wanna use the water straight off boil at that point. Once your water has come to a boil, take your timer and set it for four minutes. Grab your kettle and get ready to pour. We're gonna fill each cup just below the surface. Start your timer and pour. Once you've filled your cups, make sure to fill up your rinse cup. With the hot water added to the coffees, you'll notice that the grounds have floated to the top, creating a crust. This is called the bloom. This is a great time to evaluate the fragrance of the coffee. Hover over the cup and inhale. When your timer reaches four minutes, it's time to break the crust. The break is a really important part of the cupping process. It's the opportunity you get to smell the most aromatic compounds coming out of the crust. To break the crust of the coffee, take your spoon, put it about halfway down, hover, one, two, three, inhaling with each movement. Rinse your spoon and repeat. As you break the crust on each cup, it's good to remember to stop and take notes about what you're experiencing. Once you've broken all four cups, grab two spoons and clean off the foam and grounds that remain on top of the cups. Once your coffees are cool enough, it's time to start tasting. You can tell if your coffees are cool enough simply by touching the side of the cup. If you don't burn your hand, they're probably ready to start tasting. When you're evaluating coffee, it's important to taste the coffee at three different temperatures, hot, warm, and cool. When you're ready to taste, you're gonna grab your spoon and your spit cup. Give your spoon a rinse in your rinse cup and go to your first cup of coffee. You wanna grab a small amount of coffee in the spoon and we're gonna slurp the coffee. Slurping coffee is exactly what your grandmother told you not to do when you're drinking soup. Think about that when you slurp the coffee. Slurping hot soup. Once you slurp the coffee, move it around in your mouth and then spit it out into your spit cup. Rinse your spoon and move on to the next cup. Feel free to pause in between each cup and take notes on what you're experiencing. When you slurp coffee, you're atomizing it, mixing it with air and spraying the liquid all over your mouth. As we taste the coffee, our brain recalls memories of things that we've tasted and experienced in the past. These are called tasting notes. This can be one of the most intimidating parts about cupping coffee. Baristas and sommeliers and chefs all around the world wax poetic about tasting notes and what they're experiencing. The truth is, there's no wrong answer. What you're experiencing when you taste coffee is absolutely correct. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't, and that's okay. If you want to become a better coffee taster, it's important to taste coffee critically. Stop, give yourself time, and think about what you're tasting. Connect it to past experiences in your life, things that you've eaten before, things that you've drank before. Over time, the skill will develop and you'll build a stronger palate and become better at tasting coffee. If you're interested in learning more about how to taste and evaluate coffee, stay tuned for more educational videos. You can also sign up for one of our in-person sensory education training programs. I'm Alex Pond for Cup of Excellence. Thanks for watching.